This year's annual UN Climate Summit is fast approaching, and it may be the most important meeting of the decade. The impacts of climate change are unfolding in real time, and the world has a critical window to prevent the worst outcomes of global warming. Unfortunately, we're not moving fast enough. The UN's climate talks, or COPs, have come under fire for being ineffective and corrupt. Last year, COP28 was held in Dubai and overseen by Sultan al Jaber, the CEO of the UAE's biggest oil company. Thousands of fossil fuel executives and lobbyists held control of the meetings, and not enough was done to stop climate change. So then why care about these summits? Two reasons. For one, these meetings are often the only platform for small island nations and other developing countries to make their voices heard. These nations are suffering the worst of climate change at no fault of their own, and they must be heard. Second, these talks are a powerful hotbed of climate activism, climate justice, and hundreds of civil society groups calling for real change. We can't let these talks fall to the hands of big oil and the status quo. So let's pay attention. Here's a quick guide to the three key issues surrounding this year's COP29 in Azerbaijan. 1. Loss and damage. You may have heard of the term loss and damage in the news, but what does it actually mean? Loss and damage deals with the effects of climate change that are happening right now across the globe, particularly in developing countries and the global south. These countries have fought for more than a decade to get funding from the global north to help survive climate crisis after climate crisis. Developed countries, the historical polluters of the environment, have dragged their feet to provide loss and damage funding. Despite the issues with last year's COP, COP28 saw the creation of the first official loss and damage fund, where developed countries would earmark funds to help developing countries deal with the current climate crisis. Unfortunately, developed countries have provided less than a billion dollars of funding, while hundreds of billions of dollars are needed and owed to ensure that developing countries weather the storm now. This year, countries are hoping to finalize a new plan for distributing funds of all kinds to developing countries, called the NCQG, or New Collective Quantified Goal on Finance. This new goal must include more loss and damage funding specifically for developing countries as soon as possible. The second big issue that climate talks are focusing on this year is mitigating climate change and staying on a path towards a maximum of 1.5 degree warming. Unfortunately, our current mitigation targets are catapulting us towards 2.7 degrees Celsius, which will lead to catastrophic impacts of climate change. With the Paris Agreement, countries are obligated to create national mitigation targets, or NDCs, to slash their carbon emissions. Last year, during the five-year stock take of the world's emission reduction goals, countries' NDCs were found to be extremely underwhelming, and a much stronger set of goals will be needed to solve the climate crisis. Ahead of COP29, countries need to create and stick to stronger NDCs, and more funding must be available for countries to improve their technology and infrastructure while reducing emissions. A newer issue that has arrived in the forefront of climate discourse this year is the link between warfare and climate destruction. The world has seen countless amounts of destruction this year as Russia continues to invade Ukraine, and while large-scale humanitarian crises are occurring in Gaza, Congo, and Sudan. The innocent lives lost and the land destroyed during these invasions have tangible impacts on greenhouse gas emissions and directly violate ideals of human rights, environmental justice, and respect for the land. The military-industrial complex worldwide accounts for 5.5% of the world's annual GHG emissions, which is more than both the aviation and shipping industries combined, with the US military alone emitting more carbon dioxide than 150 other countries. Military emissions reporting is opaque, not mandatory, and may not cover the extent of environmental damage undertaken by constant military growth and spending. War leads to resource crises, mass displacement, unprecedented infrastructure damage, and a shift away from climate legislation to focus on military conflict. The climate regime can no longer ignore the role war and genocide have to play in climate change. These are the main issues surrounding this year's COP29 in Azerbaijan, also called the Finance COP. But climate activists and impacted nations are pushing for countless other issues to be brought to the table. As we get closer to the COP later this year, it is more important than ever that the world pays attention and puts pressure on the UN to make real change. Follow us in the links in the description to stay up to date on the fate of the climate.